Slugging as a skincare trend has been around for quite some time now, but I find that a lot of people still have a ton of confusion around the topic. So in this video, I'm going to be covering who's a good candidate for slugging, who's not a good candidate for slugging, what products you should be using, and how to do it properly so that you can get the best results for your skin. Hey there, I'm Dr. Sam Ellis, and I'm a board certified medical and cosmetic dermatologist in Northern California. I'm here to help you understand your skin and find products that work for you. So if that sounds good, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Before we get into the nitty gritty of slugging, let's just quickly review what slugging actually is. With slugging, you are taking an occlusive ointment, typically something that is petrolatum based and applying it as the last step of your nighttime skincare routine. And as you can imagine, after you've performed this final step in your routine, you look a little bit greasy or slimy or slug-like, if you will. Slugging can be done for a variety of reasons. First and foremost, it's usually done to help the skin heal. So when you have a disrupted skin barrier, petrolatum can be exquisitely helpful for helping the skin repair itself and help the skin with its regenerative processes. So in dermatology and clinic, I use petrolatum all the time to help with post-procedure care, whether that's someone who had a laser done or microneedling, or they had a biopsy performed or we did surgery. Anytime we are trying to have the skin heal optimally because either we accidentally or purposely did damage to it, using a petrolatum based ointment is key. Slugging with petrolatum is also a form of moisturization. So I know we think of moisturizing with lotions and creams, but a pure ointment can also help moisturize and condition the skin as well. And then lastly, we can use slugging to help enhance the efficacy of the rest of our skincare. So when we apply an occlusive ointment over the top of other skincare, the skincare that's underneath it is going to work better. Now that can lead to some problems if you are applying skincare that has the potential to be irritating. And we'll talk about that later in the video. But if you have other skincare that you are trying to optimize its function of slugging over the top of it can be beneficial. If we are talking slugging 101, this is typically done with 100% pure petroleum jelly or petrolatum. Petroleum jelly, petrolatum, those are interchangeable terms. And I would guess that the petrolatum product that the most people are familiar with is good old fashioned Vaseline. This has been around since the 1800s and has a very long proven track record. And this proven track record isn't just for efficacy, but also for safety. I feel like anytime we talk about using petroleum jelly or Vaseline, I will always get a lot of push back, especially from people who ascribe to clean beauty saying that that's a toxic product or it's carcinogenic, but cosmetic grade petrolatum that is used in products like these is completely safe. Unrefined petroleum can contain carcinogenic compounds called polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Those are removed in the refining process so that we can get cosmetic grade petrolatum. If you're kind of trying to look for a comparison, I think of it like drinking water out of the gutter versus processed and refined bottled water, of course, you're not going to go drink water out of the gutter. That's not like comparing apples to apples. And the same goes for comparing unrefined petroleum to the petrolatum used in cosmetics. The reason that 100% pure petroleum jelly is so amazing is that one, it is inert, meaning that it doesn't bind with proteins in your skin that can induce an allergic reaction. So anytime you're using anything else in your skincare, whether it's preservatives, fragrance, et cetera, there's always a potential for allergenicity. But when you're looking at pure Vaseline, you just don't become allergic to it. So this makes it a very safe and easy to use product, particularly for those who have very sensitive skin or who are allergy prone. The other thing that's great about Vaseline and a lot of petrolatum based ointments in general is that they are anhydrous, meaning they don't contain water and thus don't need to contain preservatives. And don't get me wrong, love a good preservative, but some people are sensitive to them. Either they have an allergy or they cause burning, itching, discomfort with the skin. And so if you can have a product where you don't need a preservative, that's awesome. Ooh, and one last thing before we get into like who should slug, who shouldn't slug, who's gonna benefit, who's not gonna benefit. I do wanna address the comogenicity or pore clogging idea around Vaseline or petrolatum based products. If you look at the scientific data, the good scientific data that is out there, you will see that petrolatum is non comedogenic or non pore clogging. However, it does trap things against your skin. So if you produce excess oil, if you are acne prone, if you are layering certain things underneath or you're not cleansing the skin properly before applying your occlusive ointment, you may notice that you get small breakouts or you start to form something called closed comedones, which are little 
clogged pores, essentially. So even though it is technically non-comedogenic, of course, if it causes comedones in you or causes you to break out, then that's something worth considering. But I also think there are a lot of people out there who are prone to clogged pores or who are acne prone who think, oh my gosh, I can never use a petrolatum based ointment. And that's actually not the case. I found just from my own clinical practice and seeing lots of patients who are acne prone, who have rosacea, they do really well with petrolatum based products, but everyone's skin is different. And there's always a little bit of trial and error involved when you're trying to figure out what routines or what products work best for you and your skin. Okay, now let's talk about who should slug or really who may benefit from slugging. This isn't something that you absolutely have to do, but remember we are slugging for improved skin barrier function and healing, increased moisturization, or to enhance the efficacy of the products that we are using. So there's a few reasons why you may want to incorporate it. Number one, obviously, if you have really dry skin, particularly if you are the person that does your nighttime skincare routine, and then 20 minutes later is like, oh, my skin just feels dry again. Like I don't feel like my nighttime skincare really did anything. Or you feel good when you do your skincare at night, but you wake up in the morning and your skin again feels dry and tight, then slugging over the top of your regular skincare may be super beneficial for you. And then I, of course, like I mentioned earlier, love it post-procedurally to help the skin heal faster after a chemical peel, lasering, microneedling, etc. Of course, you're always going to want to check with the person who performed your procedure because I think every practitioner has preferred aftercare for their patients. But if one of my patients wanted to go in with pure petrolatum, I am all for it. I should also mention you don't have to slug all the time. It can be something that you do only when your skin is acting up or during the winter months when the air is cooler and you have more of that transepidermal water loss because of the indoor heating and the wind factor and all those things. But just because you bring something into your skincare routine, one, doesn't mean you have to keep it there if it's not serving you anymore. But two, always make it adapt for your skin. You never want to take a skincare trend and then blindly apply it. You always need to have a purpose for what you're doing. So essentially in summary, I really like the concept of slugging for people who have dry or irritated or sensitive skin or damaged skin or some combination of that. Now let's talk about people who shouldn't slug or really just people who may need to be more cautious about slugging or may find slugging doesn't really work for them. Through my own clinical experience, I've definitely found that people with oily skin don't tend to enjoy slugging as much. They already get a little bit of a greasy sensation on the surface of their skin anyway. So to compound that with a thick or occlusive ointment sometimes just feels kind of gross. That being said, there are people out there who have oily skin, but their skin is still dehydrated, meaning that it lacks water. And so by doing slugging, but maybe like slugging light, so maybe just in certain areas, for example, you can decrease that transepidermal water loss and help the skin maintain its hydration without making the skin feel too oily or greasy. I also think slugging tends to be less desirable if you live in a humid climate where there's already a lot of ambient moisture that plus already having an occlusive ointment on your skin just can feel a bit nasty. Also, if you are a sweaty sleeper or you run really hot because occlusive ointments trap moisture, but they also can trap heat against the skin and that doesn't feel great for everyone. And speaking of trapping heat, people who have rosacea or have a very flushing prone rosacea may not like slugging either because again, you're trapping heat against the skin. And if you've ever had a rosacea flare, I know I've had hundreds, if not thousands in my life, the last thing I would want during that is feeling like that heat couldn't dissipate. And then lastly, acne. Now, like I mentioned before, petrolatum based products are non comedogenic or non pore clogging, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be non pore clogging for every single person in their specific type of skin. So if you have acne and you've tried slugging or using a petrolatum based product and you notice that it increases your breakouts, then of course it's not for you. But a lot of acne medications can cause a lot of dryness and irritation. And so using slugging on off nights that you're not using your acne medication, or if you're trying to build up a tolerance to your acne medication can actually be pretty beneficial. So people with acne, I feel like fall in the middle. It's not a definitely you should slug nor a definitely you shouldn't. Now, before we get into the technique of slugging, because I think that's actually very important in terms of having success with your slugging process, I do want to talk a little bit about certain products that you can slug with because of course, Vaseline is just fine. She is tried and she is true, but she's also thick AF. And for some people that's just going to be too overwhelming on their skin, or they may just really hate the texture of it. And you have to enjoy your skincare. It shouldn't feel like, oh my God, I have to slug tonight. So if there are products that you can use to make that process 
more successful for you, we should know about it. I'd say probably one of the biggest competitors to Vaseline and also a very well-known household name is Aquaphor. So Aquaphor is 41% petrolatum and then it has things like mineral oil as well as lanolin that act as both conditioning and occlusive agents. Aquaphor certainly has a little bit more of a slip to it. It's much more spreadable. This is actually what we use in clinic the most post-procedurally. Now, it's not going to be great if you are sensitive to lanolin, which is derived from sheep. It's a rare allergy, but it certainly is one. And of course that makes the product not vegan also, if that's important to you. So those are all things worth noting, but I think Aquaphor is a great product overall, super effective. I've used it for years and years and years. I'm also a really big fan of CeraVe healing ointment. That's 46.5% petrolatum, and then also has additional moisturizing ingredients like ceramides that CeraVe is known for, as well as panthenol and even hyaluronic acid to help draw water to the skin surface. So a lot of people find that product to be extra moisturizing. And then I do want to give a shout out to my skincare brand prequel and our skin utility ointment. When I was launching the brand, I really wanted one of the first products I created to be a petrolatum based ointment because it is such a staple, not only in my own skincare routine, but in what I recommend to my patients. So this is 45% petrolatum. And it also contains a unique shielding polymer, which allows it to continue to have that really nice, even seal over the skin, but still feel a bit more breathable. So this is probably the most lightweight of the ointments that I have mentioned and feels the least greasy on the skin. Some people love a lot of grease when they're slugging, some people don't. So if you've maybe been thinking about slugging and you're a little intimidated by going full on with uh, Vaseline or something like that. I definitely think you should look into this. I think it might be worth a try. So let's talk about what you're going to do when you're actually going to slug. The time has come. So first thing you're gonna do is cleanse the skin really well. Remember, anything we are slugging with is going to occlude the skin and trap anything underneath it. So we only wanna be trapping the good stuff. If you're doing a pure slug, you're essentially going to apply that petrolatum based ointment directly on damp skin right after you have cleansed it. You're not gonna put anything else Underneath it, it is just you, your skin, the petrolatum based ointment. This is what I typically recommend if you are post procedure or you're struggling with a lot of stinging, irritation, dryness, flaking, just keep it really simple. Take a lot of variables out of the equation and just cleanse your face and slug. And speaking of not having to use as much of the product, I think it's better to start with a smaller amount of product. You can always go in and add more. If you've gone in too aggressively with your slug, now you're trying to remove that petrolatum ointment. And that is just a much stickier, less fun, undesirable process. You make that mistake once and then you usually don't repeat it. When I'm thinking about how much product it actually takes me to slug my entire face, and often if I'm slugging my face, I will often bring it onto my neck as well. It's maybe like, a pinky nail or a little bit less, but again, start with less, you can always add more. And then I think if possible, it's great to do your slug at least 30 minutes before bedtime. That product is not going to readily sink into your skin even after 30 minutes, but I feel like if you put it on fresh and then go lay directly on your pillow, you're really negating some of the beneficial properties of that ointment. So I try to do it at least an hour before bedtime, but do what you can. Now, if you just have dry skin or maybe just sensitive skin, you absolutely can slug over the top of the rest of your skincare routine. There are some exceptions. We'll talk about that in a second, but you could go in with your hydrating serums, your skin brighteners, then put on your moisturizer and then use slugging or your petrolatum based ointment as your final step to just enhance the moisturization. Speaking of enhancement though, remember anything that is under the ointment is going to be more potent. So things you want to be very careful about slugging on top of, and I generally recommend not to slug on top of them are things like exfoliating acid. So salicylic acid, glycolic acid, and also your retinoids like tretinoin, retinaldehyde, retinol. If you slug over the top of those, you're going to enhance their penetration into your skin, which if you're not getting irritated and you actually want those things to be more effective for you may be beneficial. But I find that a lot of people reach for slugging in their skincare because their skin barrier is disrupted or their skin is hurting. So the last thing you want to do is slug right on top of those and actually make those things more irritating. So when I'm slugging in my routine, it's typically as a break from any of my active. So I'm not putting on my exfoliating acids. I'm not doing my retinoid that night. I'm generally putting on maybe a hydrating serum, maybe something to help brighten my skin since I struggle with melasma and hyperpigmentation. And then I will do my moisturizer and I will finish with a selective slug, but I'm pretty much never slugging over my retinoid or over my acids. Yeah. I just, I don't want that kind of irritation. 
Now, slugging doesn't just have to be for the face. You can slug on the body as well. And in fact, it is a very common recommendation from dermatologists, myself included, for treating patients with atopic dermatitis or eczema. I call it soak and smear, where you have them soak in a bathtub and then while their skin is still damp, they will smear the skin with either their medicated cream or their moisturizer or Vaseline or some combination of those three to help enhance the efficacy of the products that they're laying underneath that slug, as well as trap moisture against the skin because their skin barrier is so damaged. I'm also a big fan of the body slug if I need to expedite results. Sometimes I get a little bit lazy about my body skincare and then I'll find out like, ooh, there's something where I need to wear shorts to in a week and my skin's real dry. And so I will go in and slug over my body lotion for like a week and then skin is like good as new. Now, if you struggle with dry or irritated skin and you like the concept of slugging, but for just some reason it doesn't work for you, whether that's texturally or you're not getting the results that you want, there are definitely alternatives to slugging that are not equivalent, but can help with skin hydration and healing. So for example, keeping a humidifier in your bedroom can help with transepidermal water loss and keep your skin more moisturized. Also, you don't necessarily have to use a petrolatum based ointment to get really good skin moisturization. So using a thicker body moisturizer, for example, the CeraVe moisturizer, cream or the first aid beauty ultra repair cream. Those are also super nourishing body lotions that are not as thick or heavy or as greasy as a petrolatum based ointment, but can still nourish the skin really well. All right. I'm so curious. Have you tried slugging on your skin? What products do you like to use? Do you have any special techniques? Definitely let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.